Good day, it's Tony Fortune out from the technology firm. I'm going to spend a few minutes with you. We're going to decode this uh, media streaming example. Uh, don't be fooled, this is not just for media streaming. There's many applications out there that will use different port numbers depending on what's going on. Uh, even Outlook, depending on how you deploy it, uh, will have a range of port numbers it may use. So this is a really cool little, um, I'm going to say, exercise for you to get some tips and tricks. So the first thing is um, a client had a similar camera streaming type application and he knew that it used RTSP because we used a VLC media player to connect to it and test it and that sort of thing and that's what we typed in RTSP colon so on so on so on and we know that it uses 554 as its default port number and typically it's going to be TCP 554 so he set up a capture filter for um, TCP 554 and he was watching the stream and he commented that hey you know what at the beginning I saw some packets but as I watch the stream there's no more packets that's impossible Right? Where's, where's the stream? Where's the data? I wanted to calculate bandwidth and packet rate and that sort of thing. And I explained to him, I said, well, RTSP doesn't have to use the stream on 554. It can pick its own port range. So we went through this example, and that's what I want to show you. So I started up by simply doing a capture filter, and I explained to him the best capture filter to use is based on just the IP address of the device. I try to stay away from the name when I don't know the environment that well because the name depends on how your computer does name resolution, right? It could be DNS, it could be MDNS, it could be NetBIOS slash WINS, uh, it could also be LDAP, so it, I don't know all that stuff about people's environments, so I don't want to guess. So in most cases cameras will only have an IP anyways, they won't have a range of IPs and this is the one that I used here in my lab. So we started up that capture and we got a trace and here's the trace. So for the people that, that have seen my videos and, and watched me present for the last 20 years, I always go on and, and bark about the beginning of the trace file and many times the beginning of the trace file is much more important than the end of the trace file. So I'm not going to go on about that. I've got lots of videos and papers about that already and there's a lot of things you'll see in the SynSyn Act that you will not see in the trace file that will help you properly troubleshoot a problem. So that's the end of that. I got off my soapbox. So now here's the conversation, and what we want to do is find the RTSP setups, right? Because RTSP, uh, being a media type protocol, think of it a lot like when you have a, a SIP call, right? SIP, and then there's an audio channel after that, and, and they're, they're probably going to be different port numbers. So in this case, we have setup, and we can see it says track ID 0 and track ID 1. So they are slightly different, right? It's important to understand that because uh, most cameras will have minimally two different streams, if you want to call it that, like the high quality stream, the low quality stream, the primary, secondary. Every vendor gives it a different name, but it doesn't matter. But they, they probably have a minimum of two streams. So one really cool high quality stream, and then one that's going to be lower quality if you're not near the camera and using, I don't know, a cell phone or some bad network connection, that kind of thing. So you've got the 0 and the 1. So if we take a look inside the setup, you'll actually see that it says the port range for this one is 65060261. And if I look at the next one, it's going to go 62 to 63. So now I know stream 0 is 60 to 61 and stream 1 is 62 to 63. And then as I go down, you will see this unknown RTP version 3 packet, and it's 65060. So therefore, we know that correlates back to track ID 0, because remember, that's what it said right there. See? That's it. So that's a, a really simple way to find out which stream you're using. Because uh, with VLC, depending on the, the, the actual, I'm going to call it the URL, the, the path of the string you type in, uh, it may select uh, first one or the zero depending on what you pick some applications it's hard-coded and they're dumb and they just pick whichever one that they get first uh, and some other ones will sample the bandwidth or the packet loss and they'll you know pick the appropriate one or step down as you watch the video so here's the second cool part when you see the setup in RTSP you'll see a little section that says authorization basic so for the people again who've seen my other stuff you'll see this in HTTP get packets when you're logging into something using HTTP, right? Not HTTPS, HTTP. And that's a simple base64 encoding. It's not encryption, right? Because some people like to mash those words up. Don't, don't do that. They're different, right? Encryption is not encoding, right? They're, they're different. So this is an encoding, which means if I take the string, I'm going to show you, right click, copy, value, 
and then I you know there's there's a million of these websites out there so we'll, we'll just pick this one for example right and if I come over here and I just paste get rid of all this extra text and just leave just leave that part I'm doing a miserable job that's fine it's live there you go so now when I actually put that code in here and it immediately decodes right it decodes not decrypts decodes it says admin colon foscan da that so this is going to be my login for the people who don't know the syntax and the colon delineates between the login and the password see that so I explained to him this is in clear text right which is something you should be aware of uh, it doesn't mean it's bad doesn't mean it's good this is all about baselining it's about understanding the way your applications behave so now we know how this one behaves. We know that it can pick a range of port numbers depending on which track ID you want to use, 0 or 1. Uh, in this case, the U0, VLC U0. And we also know that the uh, credentials or the login, I'm going to call it authentication, if you will, is using simple base64 encoding, which means that it's very simple to decode. And that's it. So I hope that helped. I kind of rambled a bit, but um, I thought that would be useful for you. Have a good day. Bye for now.